Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com and center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs are intended to be spontaneous and scripted dialogues between myself and other supporters of the center. And our guest today is Moira Hutchinson, and we'll be speaking with Moira about her healing work. And I'd now like to invite Moira to come on screen. Hello there. Hello, Moira. Thank you for having me, Rob. It's nice to be with you in this space. We're both from Ottawa. We both live and work in Ottawa, but we haven't Absolutely. met. We haven't met in person. <laughs> uh, this is the next best thing. I'm glad we're able to finally connect. Absolutely. Yeah. Marie, well, your your website describes just a cornucopia, a plethora. <laughs> Uh, uh, practices and modalities and services. And I just want to really quickly um, share with those listening and, and those watching. Uh, they range from Akashic Records reading, card readings, coaching programs, craniosacral therapy, mm -hmm. Dharma readings, energy psychology, hypnosis in cancer care, somato emotional release, and soul manifesting blueprint. Now, have we missed anything? Well, there's a, actually a lot more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't stop me. That's why it's funny because some people that know me are, are saying, I, I hand out a postcard that gives that list, but the list is, is changing. And so people have started saying that I should just come out with a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, Moira, so, how would you describe how would you describe yourself then? So and what I, you do with someone? So what I do, I, I, I call myself a mindfulness coach. Okay. So that's kind of to, to embody all of that. Mm -hmm. That that basically, um, I, it comes from, from the fact that I am a clinical hypnotherapist. And, mm -hmm. and so really working with the, the subconscious mind. And I do have a specialty training on working with, with uh, people with cancer. And I actually mm -hmm. work one day a week at the Ottawa Integrative Cancer Center doing uh, hypnosis and, and mindfulness. Actually, I've got a mindfulness uh, program that I teach there as well. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing about all of the the spirituality part, the different readings, one of the pieces, and I guess I don't have it on my website, is the, the fact that I'm a certified life purpose guide. And so with that, that's where I get to really help people. A, a lot of people come to me feeling stuck. You know, they, they feel like um, there's, there's got to be more to my life or I keep spinning and doing the same things and, and, and not really getting anywhere. And yet deep down, they know there's something different. So it creates stress and anxiety and, mm -hmm. and depression. And, and so those are the kind of issues that people come initially for. Mm. It's actually got to the point where people will go to my website and just get a sense of, oh, she can help me. Mm. But then when they contact me, they say, I have no idea how you can help me, but I have a sense you know, yeah. so so the the key piece that I've always believed is that that the true solution to any issue, whether it's a physical issue, a mental issue, uh, an emotional issue, the key component is spiritual. Hmm. So I find that the mindfulness piece that I'm doing is helping people really reconnect with hmm. that spiritual part. Mm -hmm. It's often said, and I'm, I'm sure you say things like this too, that, that uh, we're spiritual beings in this life. Mm -hmm. Spiritual beings doing this physical, mental, emotional, mm -hmm. stressful thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making these choices. And so sometimes it, it really requires standing still for a few minutes, mm -hmm. which is why I've developed, I actually have developed my own process called mm -hmm. the letting go process. It's actually mm -hmm. a five step process. Mm -hmm. I have my uh, my book on it is actually coming out next week. Oh, how exciting! I know. So, but this one, so this one's a a body of work that I've been working on for many years, and I actually have um, a, a deck of cards that I developed mm -hmm. with this this mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And the idea that I had was, you know, how there's there's many many different oracle cards out there mm -hmm. that 
when when a person's feeling really anxious or depressed or maybe feeling like God's abandoned them, the having messages of your angels are near or mm -hmm. the the more uplifting ones, it doesn't really help a person because if if the because it's almost like the gap's too big. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm feeling really in a funk or feeling stuck and I get mm -hmm. told your guardian angels there. Mm -hmm. It might not really connect or help me mm -hmm. start feeling lifted. Mm -hmm. So that's why I actually developed the cards. And I should have grabbed a deck to show you. But the, but what I did was uh, the cards are 44 different things that mm -hmm. potentially we need to let go of. And they're things like a belief or a pattern or a mm -hmm. procrastination, uh, relationship, those kind of things. And so I wrote a guidebook to go along with that to basically really coach people into let's have a conversation about where are you? And, and that's so my intention with it was to kind of bridge that gap that I'm talking about. You know, that if I'm stuck here and there's these beautiful universal messages that I want something that kind of helps you get there easier. You mentioned the book. And that's mm -hmm. coming out next week. What, what's the title of the book, Moira? It is uh, Letting Go So You Can Thrive, okay. the five-step formula to let go. Very good. Now, is it a self-published effort? Is it being put out by a publishing house? Um, where could people look for it? So initially, it, so it is a self-publishing with, with help. I'm getting help to do that. Yep. But initially on May 23rd, it's available through Amazon, so electronically first. Okay. And then I, I'm not sure of the, the actual hard copy published date, but that, that will be following shortly after. Okay. Yeah. Now, coming back to the various services you offer, the modalities, um, have you always invited, have you always been aware of the numinous or the spiritual in your work? Or is that something that has has grown into its own? Excellent question. So, um, no, it, the spiritual part has always been here. I, I actually was brought up as a Quaker. Oh, and very interesting. Yes, it's one of the the things I'm most grateful to my parents for because the the so so the concept that I was brought up with was that if you wanted to, to connect with God or to get an answer or to connect I'm saying God, I know that not everybody likes that very much. So we'll say source or universe mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. whatever makes any people comfortable, but the idea is you go quiet so as a young, young child, that's what I was educated, that if you've got a problem or, or an issue or you're, you're trying to struggle with a sense of meaning or, or if you're upset with mom and dad, you can go by yourself mm -hmm. and sit quietly. And, and so the whole concept with, with that is that you, when you sit quiet, you then are more accessible or open to hearing that small, quiet voice mm -hmm. that you don't really get a lot of training to access that. So that's always been my 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 sort of core piece. But then what happened for me was uh, at age 18, 17, 18, mm -hmm. I actually joined, I joined a cult. Mm -hmm. And that's, that this is, so this is part of my stuck story. This is why I feel like I get to help people get unstuck, was that I was in a cult for two years. And I actually have already written a book about that that was self-published. Oh. Okay. called get your life on track without jumping off the train mm. and so that book i tell you my story about uh the 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 being in in the cult and what that did to me and in, in my you know feeling stuck and so i was there for two years mm. and then it was the coming out you know there's a lot of gifts in what every everything that i've done i feel very very blessed but it's it's when when you're stuck you're stuck you know mm. so being being in there i can remember you know because this is like i said this is 18 and i was 20 going on 21 when i came out and super super shy so withdrawn i mean in the cult you're told who you are what you can say who you can talk to completely cut off from the world completely cut off from my, my own family um 
and then to come out it, it was like a shock you know how mm. it, it's like you, you've been in the dark for so long and all of a sudden you're in bright light and it's it's really hard to see mm. so that and that's actually what led me to do the work that I do now because mm. back then so that, when I came out I came out in England this I was this experience is in Britain I, I grew up I was born in Canada but I grew up in Scotland Mm -hmm. I joined this this cult in Scotland and I was in Scotland and England and in LA for a while too mm -hmm. um, but so when I came out it was kind of I, I was England and Scotland but back then I had so I have this big gap on my resume I'm trying to find work and and being the proper stiff upper lip type thing um, I wasn't to say oh the, the the reason there's a gap on my my resume is because I was I was in a cult mm. so it made for for a lot of, of very uh, harsh work I did a lot I did things like I was a cleaner I was a builder's laborer I was and I and I tempt so the thing was was when I was in a cult I did do a lot of admin in fact being the super achiever that I am. I always have been. I that the reason I was in LA was I actually was trained to the highest level of an administrator to actually run a whole organization in there by myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it, there's gifts there because I did have administrative skills. So yeah. I, I was then able to. I started being a temp, and by age 24, I actually was an office manager. Which kind of gives you an idea of how fast and furious I pushed and said yes I can do that and then freaked mm -hmm. out overnight thinking I don't know how to do this I remember stepping into the first time of doing computerized accounting and thinking I have no idea but I had said yeah I can do this and sort of faked it till I made it mm -hmm. but then and that's the other part of my story is I kind of got into that pattern of just mm -hmm. really driven and, and working really hard and then uh, in 93, I started getting really sick and, and basically I was burning out. And I was do, it, the naturopath that I, I worked with um, in, in Calgary had basically said that I had done so many things to my body. I'd been into so many different traumas physically and emotionally that the human body wasn't designed to make. And so my body was just kind of saying, no way, can't do this. So that's what I did. And so then that's how come there's such a huge list of all the different therapies I do. Mm -hmm. Because uh, initially when, when the, the allopathic doctors had basically just said, you're burnt out and here's some pills and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I, I don't think so. I'm in my 30s. I'm not going to sort of say that to, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I studied, I started studying, that's when I started, I actually did reflexology was the first healing modality mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of, so I think that a lot of the, the attraction of the different therapies that I did yeah. was basically as a result of me saying, this is what I need now and this is what I need and this is what I need. Now, you know? it, it's very clear on your website that you have extensive training. I mean, it's it's varied. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the perhaps more significant influences in your professional life from from the training that you've embarked on? In in what regard? Like what the courses um, that I? Yeah. Is is there a particular um, approach? That's been t that's been particularly influential. Uh, was there um, a course? I mean, broadly speaking, not specifically, mm -hmm. but is there a particular aspect of this journey in your training that's been that's been significantly influential in the work you do with your clients? I think that that the 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 piece. I am I'm a sort of a big picture viewer and so I've I've kind of synthesized a lot. But the, mm. the one piece that really comes to mind when you ask that question is I mentioned that I started with reflexology. I then uh, studied as a massage therapist. Right. And from there I started training into craniosacral. And I think that's the piece that really started to speed me into that mm. whole spiritual, emotional, mental. Because um, so I'm trained through the Upledger Institute. And I remember coming through, it was really funny because I, I, I 
saw Upledger and thought, I have to train under him. I actually didn't know what the therapy was. I just felt really, really pulled by his energy and what he was offering. And it was really funny because there was a point where, so I actually did, I've done four levels. So I did two levels of craniosacral and two levels of somatic emotional release, which are like the next steps up mm -hmm. from, from craniosacral. And I did those, I trained in those a year apart because I found that the, the learning and the processing and on me took a year to kind of embody and, and say, now I'm ready to, because it's a big healing journey for me to come through those, you know? Mm -hmm. And so as a, a sidebar, I started training as a hypnotherapist and I'm feeling like, like I can remember thinking and even my husband saying, why are you going over there? Because at this point, it was like massage and body work and, you know, and then all of a sudden, no, I'm going to go over here, train mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. train in the, the mind part. And then when I started studying for somatic emotional release one, I found out that I actually was being drawn to all the same types of courses that Upledger had himself in developing somatic emotional release. And hip so hypnosis was one of them. Mm. And so I remember picking that up and said, aha, now I get it. I'm following, I'm actually following the, the, the it, it was like an unseen kind of, mm -hmm. I had I had no clue about that. So it, it was kind of a really lovely validation. Mm. And so from there, I took a lot more. I mean, I, I did a, I, I initially did a, a sort of a, a two, two or three day uh, workshop and kind of came out with a certificate saying, that's it, you're a, you're a hypnotherapist. And I, I remember thinking, I can't do that. I can't say that that's what I, what I do. I don't understand enough about the mind or the subconscious. And so from there, I did a two year training. And then I've actually done other specialty pieces. Like I mentioned to you that I've, I've done a specialty piece on using hypnosis for cancer care. So that's mm -hmm. completely separate to the, mm -hmm. the two year mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, Moira, what could and can someone expect when they come to see you for the first time? So I often meet people like this. Yeah. Um, so they either come to me physically or we meet uh, face to face on Skype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so initially, it's a great question because I mentioned earlier that people will look through all the different therapies on my site or they, and they have a sense because I talk a lot about letting go and, and uh, being stuck and that that hooks on a number of people because they don't have languaging around it. So initially when I sit down with people, it's more of a discovery. I let them, I want to hear what their story is. Where are they? What have they been doing? Mm -hmm. And where, they went, where do they want to be? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I actually, so I work with people over a, a fairly long period of time. Initially, it's usually about six months. Uh, I have clients that work, have worked with me for years because mm -hmm. What I do is we set it up that, that usually six months is a nice sort of time time period mm -hmm. to really ha start gaining the, the tools that they need to start moving forward and start achieving the goals that they want. Mm -hmm. But you know, the people that stay with me generally do because there's, there's, there's a requirement to work with me. I expect people to show up completely mm -hmm. as they are, mm -hmm. no, hiding or pretending or thinking, oh my God, what will Mary think if, if mm. I want them to be completely honestly them, warts and all. And so then what happens is some people find that, that sitting with Moira is, is sometimes the safest, most sacred sounding. People have called me that sacred sounding board because they, it's, I'm not sitting there. I'm not judgmental in any way that's why i'm saying i really expect people to just say what mm -hmm. say what's there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. so then and then from there we kind of it it's that initial session and you know the other part the sort of part to that to that initial session is i actually usually take people through a process that that is basically to help you find out what is your life purpose and what is your gift to, to bring that purpose through because mm -hmm. every one of us has a unique piece and we have a gift that allows us to do that. So that's a, a lovely part to help. It helps people start seeing why they've been through what they have and why they feel attracted to certain things and mm -hmm. sort of pushed away by other things.
Hmm. Now, Moira, if someone wanted or needed to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. um, what are the various ways they can get in touch with you? Email, website, social media? What are the various ways? All of that. So my website is wellnesswithmyra.com. Okay. And I have a Wellness with Myra on Facebook that, that I, I post inspirational. I do a card of the day uh, okay. on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I share those. Okay. Um, but there, so, and there's, there's, the website is one of the best ways because there's a couple of options to contact me right through my website. Okay. And then, and then my direct email is Moira at wellnesswithmoira.com. Okay. All right. We'll make sure that that contact information is scrolling in the credits at the end. Excellent. Okay. Moira, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank um, you. It's been, it's been wonderful to meet face to face by Skype. Hopefully we'll have the in-person opportunity. Yes, we'll have to work on that. Future. Very good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Moira. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.